This is a little video about my journey of trying to build an R2-D2. Um, as you can see on these graphics here, um, it consists of two rings, the upper and the lower, which is made up of six and six parts. Then you have another eight for the lower dome, six for the upper dome, and two for the pie top. These graphics uh, were supplied by Jabba, who also did a very intuitive video um, on his dome. Um, by watching his video was how I managed to create my beast. Um, this is a few of the shots and some video from when I was producing the parts to create my R2-D2. Now the files and the design are very generously supplied by a gentleman called Mr. Badley who you can find on Thingiverse.com and they are free to download STL files. Um, I personally have never done any 3D printing in my life whatsoever and thought that well if you're going to have a go at 3D printing I wasn't really interested in making phone cases I thought let's go straight in and produce uh, hopefully my very own R2-D2 so you can see here there's some very bad prints there uh, where I was learning some of the pitfalls um, and some of the problems including stringing, warping, uh, overheat and underheat and exploding parts. Uh, there's a plethora of pitfalls that you will learn um, or won't depending if you bother to continue forward. I must admit I was very lucky to be able to actually speak to Mr Badley direct um, and he will answer most messages on Thingiverse, that was how I first got to speak to him and he's been incredibly helpful, helping me to uh, get over some of my problems. So as you can see on my dome here, this is gluing the pieces together. Um, I used PLA and you can see there the pieces slowly being tested together, just mask and tape to hold them so I could make sure that everything fitted. my build as you can see I've had to do quite a bit of filling um, where I just had a few in particular for example here uh, where I had a little bit of warping however that's really not bad at all now I'm quite pleased with that a um, little bit more filling here because I had a drop off but again that's not too bad at all now On the whole. So what I then did was I sanded up and down, up and down, and then back and forward, back and forward. The idea being I was trying to keep the shape of the dome. I was purely making this up as I was going along. Hoping to smooth out just a few of the imperfections. Using it in a well ventilated place, my garden. Um, it's now dust free. Giving it a wipe down. don't feel too bad at all um, so let's apply the first coat and see how we get on in the end I applied three coats uh, separately of primer and sanded them back just to get it as smooth as possible and again I did the same with the sanding so you can probably see here where we've got some lines and the primers filling up the lines. Hopefully it'll all be smooth like this when it's finished. Feels better already. And then more sand and I used a 240 grit which I've recently found out I probably could have used something a bit more harsh. But it did give me a nice soft finish, so I'm not mad. And again, more sanding so up and down. First sand and fill, or fill and sand. Just want to fill up a few bits. Yeah. Note to self, this was unnecessary because that is behind a panel. Um, right now, we're about to um, glue the top on. 
Edges. Sticking the top on proved a little bit more difficult than I thought to get each of the pieces to stay down. So I created this. Ta da! Okay, so today I want to put together the upper rings. Um, and Mr. Badley has quite thoughtfully allowed for uh, 1.75 mil filament there. Unfortunately for me, I use 3 mil PLA, um, and obviously that ain't gonna fit. So my plan is to drill these all out like six and then I drill through the lot. Be careful not to push the drill out the other side. Mm, hopefully I can now insert this one in and then I'll do the same in this one and marry them together. This didn't take too long at all, about 10 minutes. That one there, that one there, some glue in here and then click it together. Lovely. Note to self, make sure you sand the ends and the sides before trying to glue them together, otherwise you end up with non-fitting nail gaps. I used a blue strap that I found laying around in the garage and it actually held them together really well. So, next I have this box of uh, parts that I need to sand down and tidy up. And as you can see there's quite a lot of, in fact, a lot of pieces. But by giving them all a slight sand, um, I was incredibly surprised at how smooth you could actually get them to come up uh, just before spraying. And look at that, no lines at all. Once you've sanded all these back, you've got to uh, remember to take off the uh, support. That's why I wear these. And if I can, I highly recommend a pair of goggles and some glasses or uh, eye protection of some form. So I've then gone over mine with a high build primer just to fill in any of the ripples. But there they are. First coat of filler primer. And then I'll try giving them another sand. Okay, so filled a few of the blemishes. And now sanded them out. So I used some P38 that I bought from Halfords to fill the holes, and then when you sand them back, look at that finish. I was incredibly pleased uh, to think that that was a piece of plastic. Next, I bought some Fiat Capri Blue um, to spray the blue, and it wasn't until I'd done all the pieces that I thought I actually don't like this colour blue so, at all. Um, I'm looking to um, spray some of the blue panels today um, so we can get these onto the dome. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of filling and sanding just to get rid of uh, any of the lines that obviously come in when you're creating these on the printer. Um, but I'm going to spray them first in purple um, and then the top in blue. So I heard somewhere if you sprayed it purple under and then the metallic blue on top, it gave you a more metallic finish. And I must admit, I really like the colour um, that I ended up with. I almost made them in purple, because um, I actually thought that looked quite cool too. But the finish you can get with the metallic on the PLA uh, looks incredible. For the radar eye, going of course with the same Ford Purple Velvet. But I've raised it up, because there's some funny angles to try and get into. Now with hindsight I probably could have sanded down inside the radar eye a bit smoother but by the time you put the lens in 
you can't see it anyway. Two coats of uh, purple. So, on the back of all of these. Now here is the lens, I just sprayed this black and applied a coat of lacquer and I was really surprised at how well it came out. Um, there's an awful lot more sanding and filling and sanding and filling that I'm not going to put on this video because it might depress you that little bit too much. Um, now I read that if you, uh, these are the hollow vis and these are going to be aluminium looking so if you spray them black first and then apply your aluminium paint or silver depending on what you want to do um, it actually gives them a much more metallic finish so just a little tip that I read online obviously so we've already put this one in where we had to shave the back off and I'll do a video of that in a minute so this is me applying the panels in the garden with my friend Sam helping me so and then just it looks a lot better on here than it does in real life it? <laughs> I'll take that off the audio <laughs> So as you can see, um, there are quite a lot of panels to apply. I just used a super glue, um, not a particularly expensive one, but it works absolutely fine. Pushing that through, had to sand the edge, but you'll have to guess that. Make sure that you push that lens in halfway at least, otherwise it will not allow you to uh, follow the curve of the dome. On some of the panels I applied a clamp with some card just to hold it in position while it dried and I did have to dremel back some of the overlap from the print. Uh, this is the ring where I filled the edges and sanded it back and I did the same with the upper ring as it is and as it was going to be metallic blue I did the same with the purple. Okay so after roughly five weeks although two weeks of that were me having issues learning about my machine um, just doing this in my spare time here he is um, I've got to say I'm actually really pleased with it considering I've never done any 3d printing ever in my life um, I'm already underway over there starting on the body which I'll put a separate video together for that one um, but I just like to say a big thank you to mr. Badley who you can find on thingiverse.com um, for producing and putting up the STL files for free download and uh, a big thanks to Jabba uh, for watching his video is how I got a lot of the ideas of how to put this together um, and I wanted to make my own one um, and I'd like to thank Jabba for letting me use the graphics at the beginning of the video um, hopefully if you're gonna have a go you can see a few of the pitfalls, where I went wrong and where it went right. But here he is.